And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Draconix, which was a request from Crovia, our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Draconix was an ornithopod that lived in the late Jurassic and what is now Portugal in the Lorenha Formation. It looked kind of like Iguanodon, it had the bulky body and short arms and a long tail. It was relatively small, though, compared to its relatives, and it was bipedal and possibly a fast runner. It's estimated to be between 9.8 to 13.1 feet, or 3 and 4 meters. That is quite a bit smaller than Iguanodon. Yes. And, of course, it was an herbivore. It had leaf-shaped denticles, the serrations on the teeth. It also had long, claw-like ungules on its hands, but it didn't have that spike thumb. Hmm. Sort of the defining characteristic. (laughs) Kind of, yeah. It had gracile feet, and its first toe was shorter and less robust than its other toes. The type species is Draconix loreori. It was found in 1991 and housed in the collections of the Museo de Lorenjoa and described in 2001 by Octavio Mateus and Miguel Teles Antunes. The genus name means dragon claw and it refers to the claw material that was found. The species name is in honor of Juo J. Loreo, a priest and pioneer in paleontology in Portugal. Is a priest and a pioneer in paleontology? Yeah. Sounds like Velocipaster. <laughs> <laughs> but better, because <laughs> that's not hard to beat. <laughs> that was a pretty bad movie. <laughs> this is what I think of when I think priest meets dinosaur. <laughs> no, think of... People who discovered dinosaurs, it's better. It is better. <laughs> now, Filippo Rotatori and others reevaluated Draconics in 2022, this year, and they described unreported forelimb material of the holotype and re described the holotype. They CT scanned the fossils. Carlos Anunciatzao, who discovered the dinosaur, had additional holotype material in his collection at home and recently donated it to the museum. Nice. Yeah. Draconix was thought to be a camptosaurid, but now it's considered to be a styracosternin iguanodontian. And others in that group include camptosaurus, iguanodon, and mentelosaurus, all of which were much larger than Draconix. The holotype of Draconix includes a partial skeleton, but no skull. It does include two teeth, a chevron, part of the humerus, astragalus, or the ankle bone, metatarsals, or the foot bones the forelimb, and more. And that holotype, based on histology, that specimen was about 30 years old. It's considered to be one of the senile individuals. Oh, back to that weird designation yeah. again. Just means it was older and fully grown for a while. <laughs> there was a left femur later referred to Draconix, but then that ended up being referred to Ankylopolexia indeterminate. Now, based on histology from a 2017 study, the holotype specimen was, I said about 30 years old, but it's somewhere between 27 and 31 years old. So in the same sort of age range as some of the older T-Rex individuals. Oh, yeah. Hadn't thought about that. But not as old as some of the other large theropods. Yeah. Still pretty on the older side for dinosaurs, though. Yes. It's also one of the oldest species of Styracosterna meaning it was just around earlier. And that may mean that Styracosterna originated in Europe. It's possible that basal Styracosternans were bipedal and fast runners, and then later they became bigger and walked on four legs. It does seem to be the typical way for dinosaurs, starting out quick and bipedal and then getting bigger and bigger and heavier, sometimes quadrupedal. And taking over, yeah. <laughs> now, other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Draconics include the Carcharodontosaur Lusovenador and the Ankylosaur Dracopelta. 